Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here on Teslanomics where we decode the economics behind Tesla. If you're new to the channel, I'd love for you to join us. You can click subscribe down below, it doesn't cost you a thing. And every time you log in, you'll get some new update about the data behind this company that's really changing our world. And if you already are a member, thanks for joining me yet again. And don't forget, just as a member of the community, you can use our Tesla referral code and get $1,000 off a new Model S or Model X. This is for you or anyone else you know. Uh, you just simply go to teslanomics.co slash TD. It'll redirect you. And by doing that, you're supporting the channel by hooking us up with some free swag if we get enough people and getting us invites to cool events, which I will then film and share back with you. So uh, you get a thousand bucks off. There's no hook or catch or anything like that. And you support the channel. So it's really a win-win. Um, so please share that and use it. Um, and you know, if you do, uh, I would love to talk to you. So send me a message and um, we'll chat. So thanks, and uh, yeah, let's d dive into the data now. Today, what I wanna talk about is my recent trip up to Santa Barbara and some data I got about that trip and unfortunately how inefficient I am. So I wanted to show that and dig into that, but first, let's dive into the long and short for this week. So this section is where I talk about something Tesla related that I'm long on, that's something I think is a good move that I'm betting for, I think will pay off in the end, and something I'm short on, something that I don't think is a good idea and might not be the best move for the company or you know whatever the industry may be. And so for the long this week, I wanna talk about Tesla cutting jobs at SolarCity. Now, I know this sucks because it's a company laying people off and I really hate the effect that that has on people's lives, but I think it's a smart move. I think that when they did the acquisition, they knew that they were gonna have a lot of issues and a lot of things to clean up and fix at Solar City. There's been a lot of reports and a lot of news about uh, just how inefficient they are in certain areas and how even I know here in San Diego, they haven't developed the best reputation because of some of the service issues. So I think this is a really good move, especially when you think about Tesla's bigger vision and, and the long-term impact of how they wanna change the world and build a sustainable future, because this is a big part of it. The solar aspect is a really big component of the company's master plan, part due or whatever they called it. And the idea here is that they're gonna cut down about 20%, which is a lot. So I really feel for those families. I'm sorry that they're gonna have to go through this, but as an investor and somebody that is very interested in the success of Tesla long-term, I think this is a good move. I think it's gonna pay off for them, and I think it's going to really help both companies uh, thrive down the road. Now for my short. Tesla is looking to bundle insurance with their cars, and they're already doing this in parts of Asia. And this was something that Jeff Evanson, who's the Tesla VP of Global Investor Relations, revealed on the earnings call a couple weeks ago. Now, I realize that some insurance companies are kind of gouging people and overpricing these cars because they're expensive to fix and you can only get the parts from Tesla and those kind of things. However, I don't like the idea of you bundling it because I fear that it'll become very Apple-like where nothing outside of their ecosystem works with it. I think that technology, and this includes the auto industry, really thrives when you have a diverse options to choose from. I think it's the better thing for the consumer if you can choose the right insurance company and they're not forcing you to go that direction that you know, you're buying it from them. I do love the idea, but I just don't really see it panning out. I, this is my, my short. I'm, I really don't think this is smart. They mentioned that they want to do this. I, I, I hope they don't. Um, now, they may offer some deals and I would rather them partner with some of these insurance companies and try to educate them on the costs and all those kind of things. So we'll see where this goes, but I really hope it's something that was more just kind of rumors and talk on the call versus something that they're really seriously considering. All right, so let's get in now to the data. And this comes from the app that I reviewed a couple weeks ago called Teslab, which is kind of like Fitbit for your car. And I went up to Santa Barbara to do my other job where I record data science training courses for LinkedIn Learning. That's what I was doing up there. So I live in San Diego, it's Santa Barbara, it's a couple hundred miles. I do have to stop once because I have to charge because I have an older model that doesn't make it all the way, unfortunately. Plus there's things like hills and traffic and all that. So I wanted to just take a look at the data that I got from this trip using the Teslab app. Um, first off, overall, since joining Teslab, I can see my 87% efficiency, which 
seems good until you go to the leaderboard and you see that people are well above 200 percent um so anyways that for me was was kind of it feels good but then at the same time not so first, if we take a look at where I started from San Diego up to Culver City, which is where I did my first charge, uh, I try to choose these ones that are at a mall and or somewhere where there's food because then I can eat. This one was pretty good, um, and it's in a mall that was just insanely busy. I was actually really surprised it was a Sunday. Uh, and you can see that I had a 83% efficiency overall, which feels good. And it was good because I was able to get up there pretty quick. I was going 70 miles an hour and actually lost 455 feet of elevation, which I don't know where that went. I mean, I'm at sea level. It's at sea level pretty much up there. So who knows what's going on with that? Um, and then the rest of the way, I was 86%. So I was a little bit better, a little bit slower, but really it was a, it was a decent trip. And part of that is because I'm able to use the carpool lane because I have those uh, stickers they give you in California to let you drive in the carpool lane. So on the way back from San Juan Capistrano down to San Diego, I was 90% efficient, which is pretty good. Felt better about that. Uh, and you know, this data is just super engaging. In fact, when I was at the San Juan Capistrano supercharger, there was about five or six of us. Great Mexican food there, but it gets busy. Um, they even have an attendant that stands there. So there you go. You can see how I did on my trip. And if you want an invite to that, you can go to our site, teslanomics.co slash teslab, and we actually will redirect you over. But because you're coming from us, they'll give you an invite kind of in a priority fashion. So you can go check that out. Uh, find me on there. You should just be able to search for my name, Ben Sullins, um, and you can follow me, and then we can kind of compete and all that. We can have fun uh, you know, seeing who drives more efficiently, or who goes the furthest or whatever. All right, thanks again for joining me. And if you, again, if you're new to the family, subscribe down below. We'll get one of these videos every single week. Uh, today was kind of a personal fun little thing. Other times we talk about things like how the industry is changing and how Tesla's disrupting it or all the different facts and things around what this company's doing and how they're changing our world. So uh, thanks again, and I'll see you back here next time.